Okay, we're in Microsoft Excel and we need to remove blank rows and columns in our data. This might be relevant if you're regularly importing data from another system into Excel. So here I've got blank columns and obviously blank rows. Now I'm going to use a function called remove and by default this doesn't exist in Excel. It's a custom function that I've created for you and it's free to use, just copy and paste it from the description in this video. Later on in the video, I'll show you how to install it. But if I open the bracket there, all I need to do is select the columns on which my data resides. Now I'm gonna trim that range so not to include the blank rows beneath the data. Close the bracket and press enter. And there we have a version of the data without the blank columns and rows. Okay, let's see how this can be done. Now I'm going to walk you through how to create this custom function, but if you're not interested in that, then just skip to the bit of the video where I show you how to install it in Excel. So we're going to start off by evaluating whether the cells in our data are blank. We can do that using the isBlank function. And all I'm going to do is select all of my data again, trim the range by putting a full stop after the colon, close the bracket and press enter. So you can see that I get all trues where there's a blank row. Now we need to resolve these results in each row to one true or false. And we can do that using the by row function. So my array is returned by this spilled array formula. So J1 hash comma. And to resolve all these trues and falses to a single true or false, we use the and function. And will only return true if all arguments are true. So there's my trues and my falses. So I can then use these results to filter my original data. So equals filter. The array is the original data set, which I will trim again. And include is returned by the results in column S. Now you can see here that it's actually only returning the empty rows, and that's because our trues correspond to the empty rows. So what I need to do back here is swap around the trues and the falses, and I can do that by using the not function. And then I get the relevant rows appearing in these results. Now it hasn't got rid of the blank columns, but I will show you how to do that once we start going through creating this custom function. So at the moment, we're using lots of helper columns to get to our result. We want to reduce this down to one formula. And to do that, we're going to use the let function. So I'll come down on a new row. And what let allows us to do is create a name for each part of our formula. So we'll start off by naming the raw data, the original data. So raw data comma and that's going to be equal to this range here. And I'll put a comma after that. So then here I can say is blank raw data because that's now what I've called our data. So then come down on a new line at the end there and close the bracket, press enter, and you can see we've got the same results as before using our let formula. So now we need to reduce the results to this column. And if you remember, we used by row to do that. Now what I'm gonna do is give this calculation a name. And essentially what we're doing here is hiding rows. So I'll call this R, R for rows. And we use by row, open bracket, our array is returned by is blank. And the function we used was and. So if I put a comma there, come down on a new line and tell it to return the results of R, you can see I get that one column, but I do need to change the trues to forces and the forces to true. So I put this all within the not function. Press enter, and there we have it. The forces now equal the blank rows. Now I also need to filter out the blank columns. And that's very easy to do because it's very similar to what we did for rows. So I'm gonna copy as part of the formula, come down on a new line. That's Alt Enter. I'll call this C, comma, paste in the copied formula. And here we're not evaluating rows, we're evaluating columns, so by col. Now I must remember to get 
rid of that original name. So now I move on to the filter and essentially I'm going to need a filter within a filter. So initially I'm filtering raw data using the results of R. Close bracket. But then I need to filter out the blank column. So I filter the results of my initial filter using the results of C. So then if I close the bracket and press enter, those are the results that I want. So I can now get rid of all these other helper columns. So the next step is to make this into a custom function. And to do that, I use the Lambda function. So Alt Enter to come down on a new line, Lambda. And what I need to do is specify my parameter names. So these are like the arguments within a function. Now I only need one argument, which is data, comma. So basically that's the data that we want to remove the blank rows and columns from. So then instead of specifying the range here, I write data. So essentially whatever the end user selects is then assumed to be the raw data. So then I need to close the bracket for Lambda and press enter and I get the calc error because you can't use Lambda functions directly within the spreadsheet. What you have to do is create a name for the function. So what I do is I copy this formula. I go up to the formulas tab on the ribbon, then to name manager. I create a new name. And now I've already got one called remove. So I'll call this remove two and then delete what's currently in the refers to box and paste in your formula. Click on OK. Click on close. So now if I type in remove two, there's the argument data. Select my data, trim it, close the bracket, press enter, and there we have it. 